All right, so we are on page 13. Like I said, we finished page 13, but I've been teaching this climate patterns lab the past couple of days, and I've been noticing a few things <laughs> that just need to be covered that I thought some of them everybody knew, but I guess I was wrong. Do you guys know where the Southern Hemisphere is? Probably now, when you say that is the perfect answer, and who is it in the world? When Tucker said in the south, guys, is Florida in the southern hemisphere? No, Florida is not in the southern hemisphere. Thank you very much. So, let me remind you of this map. So, Florida is here. Still in the Northern Hemisphere. Is Florida hot? Yes. How about here in South America? That is the Southern Hemisphere. What's the weather like there? Tucker's got it. How about the rest of you who thought because it was in South America, it must be hot? Okay, it's okay if that's really what you thought. It's been a confusion all day today. But one thing that I said, so it says higher latitude, which are the poles, the colder the temp. So guys, as we go from the equator out, like down both south and north of the equator, the temperatures start to get colder. And in addition to that, the temperature range increases. As we go away from the equator, we get more weather like us where we have the seasons. Um, even as we go to Florida, yes, they still have seasons. They're not as pronounced as us. They don't get piles of snow. But yes, it's colder in January and February than it is in July and August. Here's something I thought people knew, but I guess I might be wrong. What do you guys know about the seasons in the Southern Hemisphere? They're reversed of ours. They are reverse of ours. So when we're up here, like right now, we're starting to get towards summer. What does that mean for this place down here in South America? It's almost their winter. So their seasons are opposite ours. Their summer is in um, December, January, February, March. That's their summer. So Christmas, which is December 25th everywhere, Christmas in Australia, Christmas in South America happens in the middle of their summer. It's like it's in the middle of our winter, it's the middle of their summer. So instead of Santa Claus wearing a big red suit, he wears a different kind of big red suit. He wears a swim trunks, bathing suit. I don't know. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, in, in Florida, it's the same because for Santa, Florida is even warm enough in the summer but or in the winter. But for them, it's not only just happens to be a warm place. It's the middle of their summer. Right. Their school year. So right now, they're just they're getting through like their first quarter where you guys are just wrapping up your fourth quarter. So they go to their uh, months off are going to be, I'm not sure exactly when, but probably January and February-ish. Well, we're off July and August. Okay, I just wanna make sure people knew that for the lab. So as we go away from the equator in both directions, temperatures in general get colder, but the other key there is that this, um, you'll have a higher, the gap, the gap between the highest, uh, the coldest day and the hottest day is gonna get bigger as well. I just wanted to talk about that. Now, nearness to a large body of water. This even includes nearness to an ocean. Any body of water is going to keep you slightly warmer in the winter and slightly cooler in the summer. And then the ocean currents, which are on page four of your reference table, um, will also bring either warmer or colder air. On that note, can you guys go ahead and read question one at the bottom of this page, please, and use your reference table to answer it. So right now do the bottom of page 13. Actually just question one.
Again, just grabbing your reference table, page four, you're looking for um, which ocean current cools the climate of some location along the western coast of North America. First dilemma is finding North America. Second thing you have to do is decide which way is west. So here's North America. Remember, never eat soggy worms. So we're over here. And the only current that will cool, so cool currents are the black arrows. <coughs> that will be the California current. I, I know, that's why I told you to do the question one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. But yeah, that answer would be the California current. And yes, the next question is exactly the same. And it's got the answer to so we're going to talk about wind belts, which are the next thing that are going to control your climate. Um, I am pretty sure any of you who had Mrs. Brown last year know about some wind belts. Mm, you guys are trying to think, when did Mrs. Brown talk about wind belts? I believe she's a big fan of talking about monsoons. Yeah, she is. Who remembers? Haley remembers, she goes a little crazy about talking about monsoons, I hear, but it's great. So hopefully this will jog some of your memory. <coughs> You're gonna keep your reference tables out. We'll come back to them. We're just gonna get the notes real quick on the top of page 14. Again, we've already briefly talked about why those winds on page 14 are bent. We know why they blow, because they blow from areas of high to low pressure. You know, the spinning of the earth will control those pressures. And then you've already done this in lab too. So once you get these notes, we're gonna go right to the reference table. Sure, what's going on? Right. So you have this reference table on page 14. Again, if you could grab your reference table and take a look at it. So we did already talk about this reference table. You have been using this reference table, hopefully, in lab. So these are the wind belts that are on the United States. This is the way they will always blow. This will determine which way your weather typically comes from. One thing you have to be able to do is find approximately where the United States will be on this map. So in general, 
you have to be able to point to uh, where the United States is. Where would the United States be on this map? Between the 30 and the 60 for the most part. We know that Buffalo is at 41 degrees longitude. So latitude, sorry, latitude. So we'd be up in this general region. So is most of the United States. Uh, there's a little bit below 30, there's a little bit above 60, but most of the United States is in that section there. So in all of the United States, our wind typically blows from the Southwest to the Northeast. That is the way all the weather patterns typically move in the United States. We're part of the Southwest winds. Uh, a couple of other things from this map that you should be seeing is, and we already talked about this, they do all bend to the right. So for ours, it is easy to see that those winds are bending to the right. It is a little bit more difficult when you're talking about going from the North Pole to 60. But if you remember when we talked about this, one thing I had you do was to take this map and put it under your chin. So you guys, I'll do that. And look down at the arrow that's now going. So you're holding it. Now look at the arrow that's going from the 90 to the 60. Which hand is that pointing to? So again, nope, kind of the other way. This way. Facing out. Yep. And then look at the one that's going from that. No. That's the, the North Pole. Now, when you look down from the 90 to the 60, which hand is that arrow pointing to? Your right or your left? Should be pointing to your right. Does everybody see that? Tyler, you see it? Okay. Want me to come over and double check? Yeah, right there. Yeah, so put it back under your chin. Okay. Yeah, put it back under your chin. You see how it's pointing to here? Right. Okay. So you do the reason why I make you change how you're looking at it is because you got to change your perspective. You actually have to put yourself on that arrow blowing from the North Pole to the 60, and you can see it's blowing towards the right. Um, I do remember that they blow to the right because in the northern hemisphere, well, that's where we live. And of course, we're right. Everybody else is wrong. That's how I remember. The last thing you have to remember from this map. Winds always blow from what pressure to what pressure? High to low pressure. So on all of these arrows, the butts of the arrow is where the high pressure is. Because they go from the butts to the heads. So anywhere where there's butts of the arrow will be high pressure. Anywhere where there's heads of the arrow will be low pressure because it goes from high to the low. You'll notice that all the low pressure areas are labeled wet, all the high pressure areas are labeled dry. Remember, high, dry, cool, and clear. So the high pressures are always going to be dry, the low pressures are always going to be wet. There's not much to say here except for this is where our um, winds are going to be coming from. And then if you can look at these, if your winds come from the ocean, you can expect that they're going to be wet. If they, um, they come from the land, you can expect they're going to be dry. The last thing is one of my very favorite topics. How I'd like you to work this, where it says topography. These are the bullets that go there. So go ahead and write these. And honestly, this is the last stuff we have for the entire chapter. I'll let you write and then we'll talk. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which way, which side do you think the windward side is on? What do you think it's? Are you thinking too hard? The windward side. So it's the side that's getting the wind. Yep. No, we'll talk about it. I'll write it and I'll show you a picture so it all makes sense.
Um, kind of. We got that. All right, so let's talk about this. Um, you know what? I forgot to put this label. So you guys have this exact picture in your notes. Put this phrase or a graphic lifting, like right, so that you can see that that phrase is labeling this picture. So maybe off to the side, maybe pointing to this. This process is called or a graphic lifting. This is something brand new to you, so and the regents love this stuff. So I'd like you guys to um, pay attention to this. This is actually something that I, so I've talked about this before. There's things I would and would not teach you if I had my choice. This is a concept I would teach you because I personally find it fascinating. So in that, in the writing before, I talked about the phrase oh, adiabatic cooling. Adiabatic cooling is honestly my favorite earth science word because it says adiabatic cooling. It's just fun to say. Do you remember the last time we talked about adiabatic cooling? Yeah, because adiabatic cooling is a fun word to say. So I always have fun when I say it. Adiabatic cooling was when clouds form. So how do clouds form? Remember, warm air rises. What happens is it's rising. It cools, hits its dew point, water droplets form, and we have clouds, which then rain. So that's normal weather. Warm air rises, cools, hits its dew point, rain. With a mountain, instead of air just rising because it's warm, we have the wind blowing. Wind blows, hits a mountain. What happens when the wind hits a mountain and the air hits a mountain? It's blowing, 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 hits a mountain. It has to go up. The air can't go through the mountain because it just can't. Air can't go under the mountain because it can't. So what does the air have to do? It has to go up. It has no choice. Now, normally only warm air goes up but when we hit a mountain, any air goes up. So no matter what the air temperature is, it hits the mountain and it goes up. And again, no matter what the temperature was, what happens to any air when it goes up? It cools. And what happens when air hits its dew point? It cools so much that it hits its dew point. Forms clouds and it rains. So with mountains, there's always going to be a wet side and a dry side of the mountain. So basically the air goes up, rains all of its rain over here. Cause again, air has to go up. So it's going to cool. It's gonna empty out any water it had. Even if it didn't have much, it's emptying everything out on this side. When it gets back to this side and it's allowed to go down again, it's all dried up. 
And how it works is we actually have a mountain range and we have a lush green area on one side because it gets lots of rain and a desert on the other side. Anybody here ever heard of the Napa Valley in California? The Napa Valley in California is where they grow lots of wine or grapes for wine. Napa Valley is known for its wine because they can grow lots of grapes there. Well, Napa Valley is on this side of a mountain range in California. So what do they get a lot of? Rain, grapes. You guys can picture you biting into a grape, right? What do you think a grape needs a lot of? It needs a lot of water. They're a very, they need lots of water. They need good temperatures, but they need water. So that's why they can grow grapes on this side. Well, you know what's on the other side of that mountain range? Not, not just rocks, that Death Valley. Death Valley, California on the other side of the mountains. Death Valley is called Death Valley because it's so freaking hot there and doesn't get any rain. One side of the mountain, lush green, can grow grapes. Other side, deserted desert. This is actually the um, same thing is true in Oregon. It's the weirdest place. Oregon, ever hear of Portland, Oregon? Yeah, well, They're known, so Portland, Oregon, also near Seattle, Washington, same concept. You guys know like what Seattle's famous for? No. Rain. No. Uh, so yeah, that too. Seattle literally rains like practically every day there, yeah? So my uncle actually lives in Oregon. So my brother lives in Oregon. And it's he Oregon. Said, Oregon, it's, he said it's like, the, Where does, wait, where, we're getting, it's the complete opposite. Where does he live? Do you know this? I'm not exact. I can probably go on Facebook. Okay. Me, there's, Do it for um, homework, would you? All right. I'm not going to. I just, I'm just curious because my brother lives there too. So yeah, he said, like, because we'll FaceTime him sometimes. And he said, whatever we're getting, we're getting, he's getting the complete opposite. Yeah, it's super weird there. So um, it all depends on where he lives. So I can't speak for every part of Oregon. So like I said, Seattle is kind of near Portland. They're on this side of the Cascade Mountains. So right on the coast, it rains a lot, um, kind of cool there. This side, luscious greenness. Well, my brother lives on this side. He literally lives in a desert. Now, his desert, because it's lined up latitude-wise, they're almost identical to us. So they get the same types of weather. So it's the same temperatures pretty much, but he's on this side and it never rains at his house. He never, he doesn't get much rain. It behaves like a desert because again, no clouds. So he gets super cold at night. He has to have a greenhouse to grow any plants because they freeze well into, we were there in, um, was there in July and it got into the thirties in the it, at night. Yeah, so then he's probably on this side. He's probably closer to the coast. If you could find out, I'd appreciate it. I can find out right now. But well, no, I just want you to pay attention right now. So this is called orographic lifting. And what I want to do is on our packet here. Again, you should have labeled this packet orographic lifting. So right here. And I want this side to be labeled the windward side. Now, Tyler brought this up. What does windward mean? It's the side that's getting the wind. And I want you to tell me that this side is going to be the wet side. Wet and cool, this side, which is now the leeward side. So leeward, only way to remember that one is windward is the wind side, leeward the other. This side's always going to be dry and hotter. Again, the last bit of notes for this.
on the, underneath the mountain, these are the notes that'll go there. The leeward side, the air is compressed and it sinks. The leeward side is usually warm and dry. Windward side is always wet and cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Up out west is a completely different world than us. All right, when you're done here, I want to talk about page 19. Kind of goes along with what you've been doing in lab. Well, maybe today would have helped a little bit. So on page 19, you'll see this map. And this map should look kind of similar to that map you've been doing in lab. So um, the region loves, they call it an imaginary Earth-like planet. So they want you to apply everything you know about Earth to um, a similar, similar place, but they don't want you to like use your knowledge of like, oh yeah, Alaska's cold, Florida's hot, Australia, things like that. They want you to just know, understand the concepts. So they give you this imaginary Earth-like planet. Um, they tell you the map shows the imaginary Earth-like co uh, continent on Earth. Arrows represent the prevailing winds. So the winds are still there like they used to be on the, on the map on page 14 of your reference table. Tells you letters A through D represent locations on the continent. Location A and B are the same latitude at the same elevation at the base of a mountain. Now, I'm gonna actually go here. Before we get started, what things, there are four things that control the climate. What are those four factors that will control the climate of a location? Okay, so latitude, Elevation. Uh, no, so what can, so nearness to a body, body of water. Yep. Oh, body of H2O and ocean currents. So when we look at this imaginary Earth like planet, we have to take in all those factors that we just talked about. So before we even start looking, which one of these places do you think will be the hottest? Why? Okay, it's the closest to the equator. So it's the closest to the equator, which yes, far the south. Um, what's going on with A and B? They're the same latitude, so they should have the same temperature. They're on the different sides of the mountain. So it's going to have that orographic lifting we were just having. Which one's on the windward side, A or B? A, because again, that's the side the wind is coming from. So that's why they talk about the direction the winds blow. Um, okay, so let's, I think that's good enough for now. Let's get started on the question. Over the course of a year, compared to, the, compared to location B, location A will have, so will the so we already said A is the windward side. Windward is the wet side, so it's going to have more precipitation. Now will it have a smaller temperature range? No. Okay. So, but wait. So.
So let's, there's gotta be something else going on here too. What do we know about A? Where is it? It is the first letter of the alphabet, thanks. But it's also, it's also near a large body of water. It's near the, so when you're near a large body of water, what kind of, what does it do to the winters? Warmer winters, slightly warmer winters. Yep, Lake Erie gives us a slight, it gives us a warm breeze and a, no, I say warm in quotes, because 32 in the middle of winter might actually be warm. So warmer. it, right, exactly, it's warmer. If it feels like 20 outside, but you're getting a 32 degree breeze, you're like, oh, that feels good. Yes, and that's why I say it. So as long as Lake Erie is not frozen, the breeze coming off of Lake Erie will be 32 or greater. Because if it's frozen, then it's below 32. If it's not frozen, it's above 32. So in the middle of winter, 32 degree breeze can actually feel warm. And then in the summer, you go to the beach and it feels slightly cooler at the beach than it does here at Pioneer because you got again, 70, 72, in the middle of summer might feel like a cool breeze. So being near the water will give you a slightly warmer winter and a slightly cooler summer. So will that be a smaller temperature range or a greater? That's smaller. It shrinks the difference between the coldest day and the warmest day. The climate at location C is much drier than location D. This difference is explained by, let's go through the answers. Is C drier because it's further from a mountain? They're both very far from a mountain. Is C drier because it's closer to a larger body of water? No, they're both basically the same, plus that would make it drier. Is C drier because it has a latitude that's experiencing longer average daylight? Nope, in fact, that's not gonna make it drier, but let's double check four. It's at a latitude where air is sinking and winds diverge. What kind of pressure is at C and how do I know it? And how do I know? Because it's the butts of the arrow. So it's a high pressure and we know high, dry, cool and clear. It's at a latitude where the air is sinking, pushing down, making it a dry, high pressure, which is dry. Compared to the observations made at location D, the, oh, oh, throwback question that I guarantee will be on the region. Compared to the observations made at location D, the observed altitude of Polaris at location B is. Ooh, who remembers anything about Polaris? First of all, what's another name for Polaris? North Star. And what do we remember? Hopefully something, because I guarantee you this will be on the regions. So at 90 degrees at the North Pole, that's helpful kind of. No, nope, you can see it all day, all night long. You can only see it in the Northern Hemisphere. What you need to remember is alt equals lat. The altitude of Polaris is equal to your latitude. So it's saying compared to the observations made at D, the observations of Polaris at B. So here's D, what will B be? Will Polaris be higher, lower, the same? It will be higher because it has a higher latitude. And it's always like that. It doesn't matter what season, doesn't matter anything else. All right, you have homework. And I think what we're gonna do, let's see, which ones make more? I think we're gonna go questions one through 15. So that's pages 15, 16, and 17. And 18, I know it sounds like a lot of pages, but it's only 15 questions. So your homework is page 15 through 
18, numbers 1 through 15. Remember, anyone doing test corrections, they are due today by the end of the day. You are guaranteed 10 points higher or a 65 or whatever grade you earn on the test. Everybody who has redone it has gotten better grades and it's raising their averages quite a bit. Highly recommend.